Well, I'm joined now by David Heap. Uh, he's the spokesperson for the Freedom Flotilla Coalition and has previously been on board a boat which was intercepted itself by the Israeli military trying to break this uh, blockade. Good of you to join us. Thank you for C having me on the show. Can I ask you, first of all, have you heard directly from uh, any of your people on board this vessel? And, and, and if not, what do you imagine is going on there well, now? We know from experience pretty well what happens. When we're attacked, we're not intercepted. We're attacked and hijacked in, in international waters, a clearly illegal act. The first thing that happens is that the occupation Navy cuts, blocks all of the uh, audio, um, satellite signals, uh, transmitting data from the boats, but also satellite phones. This is an act of an admission of, of, of guilt because they're about to commit something that they know they don't want the eyes of the world to see. So when we're responding to the calls from Gaza and going there, to um, you know, citizens of the world, grassroots movements to meet these people who are calling for us. Um, this, for some reason, is something when they when they block our boats, when they attack our boats and board them <clears throat> and kidnap them, people on board in international waters. Um, they know that they don't want the world to see it. So our last call was just after uh, 1 p.m. local time, mm. um, and you know they had said we're losing we're losing satellite signals. And the, and the war vessel warships is, are on is the due way. into Ashdod pretty much imminently right now. now. Look, the activists on board, you're one of them, you've mm. been one of them, you're all pretty well aware, I would have thought, of the risks, and yet you're still prepared to do it. I'm thinking of 2010, the Mavi Marmara. Ten, nine people, I think, were killed on board. It, it, it's a high risk pursuit this isn't it it's it's risky but it's much less risky than it is uh the the life under occupation in particular under blockade for the palestinians of gaza so these are people who walk to the separation fence every week uh these are fishers who put to sea and their boats are attacked much more often and much more fatally than international boats they've lost many more boats than the international movement so we share a small part of the danger that they share every day week in week out decade in decade out under occupation now since this flotilla left Norway, I think, back in May. It's docked in 28 different ports right. on the way. How much international support has it accumulated on that journey? Well, this is the remarkable thing. We meet since the end of, of uh, the end of April. Uh, we've been, as you say, in 28 ports, and we see this outpouring of popular grassroots support from people's organizations um, across the spectrum in all of these ports, um, demanding that people's uh, uh, basic rights, Palestinians in Gaza should have their basic rights uh, recognized, in particular the right of freedom of movement, because and they know that it's not right that people can't fish in their own waters, that students can't travel to study, that people can't travel to get work or health care, right? And they know that an occupation like the Israeli occupation of Palestine, they know that an apartheid regime has to restrict freedom of movement in order to survive. And yet what you don't tend to accumulate is high-level government support. Well, it comes from below, right? I mean, this is what we see in all of this, the ports we've visited. There's this grassroots pressure, and it's coming up, and particularly mm. in the last ports we've been in in southern Europe, in Palermo and Naples, also in Cadiz, and even... Um, at Gijón in northern Spain, we had municipalities which were passing resolutions in support of us. We were voted illustrious visitor by the uh, city of, of Cádiz and uh, other... We were met by the mayors of Palermo and Naples. Um, <clears throat> and we see that it's pushing up. The city of Gijón pushed it up to the uh, region of Asturias. But, but so if in the end... This is, this is something that comes from the street upwards. We it, don't expect the state governments to jump on, on our side. We know that where our governments are all complicit. Our governments are complicit with the occupation. So where the governments fail to lead, the people have to lead. Well, it does rather beg the question, though, that if this is a people-led mission mm -hmm. leading where governments have failed, what hope of change without government support? I mean, it is... A problem. Uh, you and I both remember the change in South Africa. It wasn't led by governments. Governments were the last on board. That was a people's movement for decades before the governments got on board and said apartheid is wrong. The same thing is happening with Israeli apartheid and the occupation and the blockade. It isn't led by governments. Governments may say words, but they don't take action. It takes people to lead, people to show the way, people to take the risks and put themselves on the line mm. to reach the conscience of humanity. And eventually it's moving up. It's moving up towards uh, more and more broad uh, social civil society support and eventually political support that says this cannot continue, the blockade cannot continue and the occupation cannot continue. David Heap with the Freedom Flotilla Coalition as you await news, as we do as well, of uh, this boat heading into Ashdod Port. And our second boat coming along in a couple of coming days. Coming along Freedom in a couple of days. Following uh, return. David, thanks for your time. Thank you.